Now don't panic. This isn't going to be one of those get rich quick scheme videos that are plastered all over the internet nowadays. But it will help you achieve financial freedom, I promise, if you stick around to the end and do exactly what this video shares. Now, we know that every single kid fresh out of primary school or every guru out there is sharing their tricks on how they make £10,000 a month. And it's weird because it's always 10,000. Never 20, never 18, never 17. It's always 10K. And although I could be overly cynical and call that BS, which I do, it's certainly possible to make more money now than it was a few years ago. And it's never been easier to tap into audiences where you can sell services and sell products too. But anyways, let's jump on with this video and get ready to be lectured in the nicest possible way because some of what I'm about to say may not be what you want to hear. Now, before jumping into step one, I just want to clarify what I mean by financial freedom. As you know, it's a buzzword for many of the gurus trying to sell you their crap and often requires them leasing Lambos and taking photos of their laptops with some crazy sea views in the background. But that's not my goal here, my friends. I don't roll like that. But what I will help you with, my friends, is to get to a place where you are financially independent. And essentially, you have more choice and freedom in your daily life. And I will say this now, it's not going to be easy, but it's 100% going to be possible. Now, enough about that. Let's jump into step one. And it's actually something we can all do after this video is understanding what your financial incomings and outgoings are and then looking at how we can tailor this towards achieving your goals. So what I usually do is I go through all my bank statements and I look at all the bills that I've been paying on a monthly basis. So your mortgage, your car, your energy bills, your just eats, your YouTube channel memberships, and essentially what you want to do is list all of these and total the amount that goes out every single month. Now, any ad hoc stuff like drinking on occasions or your ASOS and Amazon deliveries, try and calculate an average of these two. Now, what I usually do is I add 10% just to be over conservative and have some sort of contingency. Now, once you've done this before doing anything else, what I want you to do is run through every single one of these outgoings and tick the ones that are necessary. So things like your heating unfortunately. Your mortgage, your rent, your food and your petrol of course. Those are the essential kind of things I'm talking about. Then the ones that aren't essential, just leave those there for a second. And once you've done this, your next step is to total the essential column up too. So you should now have a column saying total outgoings and also total essential outgoings. You can label it as you choose. And just a quick side tip here, if you have any credit cards with high interest loans on them, they are essential and they must be paid off first. Now moving on to the next column, what I want you to do here is write down your incomings. This may just be your job for some of you but it could also be other things like side hustles and alternate income streams especially if you've been a subscriber of this channel as i know many of you have taken up some of the side hustles that i've mentioned on all these videos that you can see on the screen here then friends total this up and you will need to see what you are essentially left with at the end of the month now the essentials column in my opinion is what you should be striving for at a bare minimum my friends in terms of what you need to achieve and you would then aim to achieve to earn this by the following routes that i'm going to list now and number four is the one that i chose the first is through investment if you have enough cash to invest or an asset you could potentially make cash from or release equity from, you could rely upon this to supplement your income. I understand it's not feasible for everyone, but I'm just putting it out there for yourselves. The second is through a side hustle or a business. If you hate your job, now is probably the best time to start working on something on the side to hopefully one day replace that income or at least reduce the hours that you're spending on your nine to five so you can start working on this. The third is you could just stay in work, although it kind of negates the idea of financial freedom. As many people sadly don't even like the jobs that they're doing so let's just scrap that for now and the fourth which i've done you may actually find that by sticking to your non-essentials you have surplus cash already i.e by not overspending on things like eating out excessively or fancy clothes etc now if this happens and you have some sort of surplus of a couple of hundred pounds this is actually brilliant because that could be a day of work for you heck it could even be two days of work and whatever it is there's a possibility now for you guys where you could perhaps reduce your hours and come out of work for that day to maybe work on something you enjoy maybe pursue a passion that you've always wanted to do or even just reduce your hours because right now you're a little tired you see and i'll speak about this in the next point a lot of the time we are stretching ourselves trying to live a life we don't 100 percent need and find ourselves often trapped of having to supplement that with a nine to five that we can't get out of i personally my friend stripped my life back to a point where i realized i could quit work actually sooner than i thought now this wasn't because i was overly frugal i just simply realized that apart from a roof over my head good food and a gym i really Really didn't need much else in life so those nights out and those fancy clothes that i was buying literally every single month they weren't actually a necessity for myself 
Step two, now this is the uncomfortable phase. And what I mean by this is when you seemingly go back a step in life or you have to cut down on things that let's say you're used to, it's gonna suck. There is no other way of me telling you that. Trust me, many times in my life, I've had to personally pivot. I've gone from a brand new four bedroom house to moving into a two bedroom flat to start up our business and continue investing. That was a big, big step back, at least from an outside perspective for myself. Although I had a plan in mind, I've gone from two brand new cars on the drive to just one. And that's not because I can't afford two on the drive, but it's mainly because it just made no sense and I was happy to have that bit of discomfort of car sharing and then having an extra 300 to 400 pounds a month where I could essentially invest that. Now whatever your sacrifice is here it's gonna sting a little bit at first my friends but humans you and I were amazing at adapting and providing you aren't stopping yourself from essentials you will get used to this quicker than you think you just gotta stick at it my friends. Now another side tip here is if you are one of those people who like to keep up with the Joneses as they say and you're trying to maintain a life to maybe please other people you know who you are you will struggle here my friends. Letting go of a few luxuries and your ego for a short amount of time I promise you can massively help you in the long term. This is what investing sometimes is about it's not sexy but it's worthwhile. Yes you may look a little cheap right now and it may look to others that you actually actually going backwards in life for a few years but when that time comes and you're able to do what you want when you want with who you want a few years down the line and that time will come if you're consistent my friends that feeling will be so worth it because many of those people keeping up appearances 24 7 will be stuck in their jobs until retirement age now next up we have to learn a skill this is really important my friends and i really urge you to do this whether that's through a passion or a hobby it could be as simple as making youtube videos baking drawing whatever it is it can actually be anything but we have to get good at something and that requires a bit of time if it's something that you enjoy even better or should i say something you can tolerate more than your current job for me it's content creation and i'll give you a quick example i like it and 80 percent of the time i am motivated to do it compare that with my old corporate work literally 99 percent of the days i didn't want to go in and essentially what that helps me with is that I now have something that I try not to label as a job that actually brings in income towards my essentials. Now it might not bring in as much as my corporate job but it definitely brings in income whilst I enjoy doing it and I think enjoyment and happiness is definitely part of this equation that we're after learn to leverage you have to learn to leverage your time your money and your skills wherever possible because by leveraging you can get to where you want to get to much quicker for example i wanted to build houses it was always a dream of mine you've probably seen my videos floating around the internet but one thing i didn't want to do having spent so many years doing so many things and finding myself at my particular age was learn the full-time process about it and i thought what i'm actually going to do here is i'm going to leverage some developers to help me build these houses and i use my skill set and my audience and some of the stuff i could do by using their skill set and other ways you can leverage this is let's say and i'm going to use this channel for an example and hopefully this makes sense with you because i know many of you can do this is let's say i make 400 pounds a month on this youtube channel by creating four videos so that's essentially a hundred pound a video by the way i don't make that much it's a lot less but liking this video and supporting this channel will hopefully get me there one day and i can hopefully bring you guys more value now using that hundred pound a video example for four videos a month because that's all the time i have in terms of recording and editing which is so tedious and so long i can't record more however let's say i wanted to do eight videos a month and i found an editor on somewhere like fiverr and offered him let's say 50 pounds a video and trust me friends you can get him as cheap as 25 pounds a video but i'm going to go a little bit higher here we're going to get a little bit bougie and i'm going to say for eight videos at 50 pounds a month we're looking at 400 pounds so yes that's my total income that i would have been getting every single month however bringing in now potentially 800 pounds a month i'm receiving the same income they're getting paid and i've also doubled down on my side hustle by creating more content now obviously there's some time recording here but editing is usually a hundred times longer than recording so you have not only saved yourself time to do something else afterwards but you're also earning the same amount of money by just leveraging somebody else plus more videos potentially means more followers and subscribers which potentially means more income from affiliate links being clicked courses being sold or whatever it is that you have to offer so guys i really need you to think about that think about how you can leverage and potentially scale up and step five I need you guys to ask me questions now because it's very difficult for me to know exactly what you want or where you're lagging in your financial freedom goals. And I promise you, my friends, I will try and respond to every single question below. 